Hi, I'm Una Williams of Gluten-Free Cooking with Una. I have a culinary arts degree and I trained in London and Switzerland, but now I live in New Hampshire. About five years ago, my son was diagnosed gluten and lactose intolerant with new, no previous symptoms. And with a mother's guilt trip, I decided I had to do what I could to help him. Now, he is now actually celiac disease and dairy intolerant and we found more and more family members with the same problems. And where I've always cooked from scratch with real ingredients, it was easy for many recipes to make them gluten free. I actually had an email some years ago from a man saying to me, tell me how to cook chicken and pork and vegetables and salad. And I went back to him and said, I really don't know what you're talking about. These foods basically are naturally gluten free until they're messed around with by the manufacturers in some way. So the best way to go gluten free is just to go back to real food, which many of us have to do, or most of us have to do, with gluten-free. It's really only the baking that needs changing. So for ordinary meat recipes, etc., you're just looking at gluten-free stock, a different flour to use to thicken any sauces, make sure that what you're buying is gluten-free. But your plain meat, plain salads, plain veg should be naturally gluten-free, so it's not a problem. But I was finding, um, obviously, as I say, mother's guilt trip, I would make ordinary chicken meat, etc., gluten-free with no problem. And I was slowly changing all my wheat flour recipes, my son's favorites, into gluten-free. The problem came to be that, as you all know, and you've tasted many gluten-free recipes, are utterly disgusting. And so is the stuff you buy in the stores. I mean, I was at trade shows in New York years ago, and the stuff then was pretty disgusting. I have to wonder how can they possibly put this stuff out to, as a market when it tastes that awful? Don't they even know what they're doing? So yes, I try and make them gluten-free and I make them dairy-free. And I tend to say that my gluten-free has to be as good as my wheat flour because my six foot four baby would soon tell me if it wasn't. And my husband's far politer. Okay, so you've just had the diagnosis, diagnosis that for some reason you need to go gluten-free. Part of you is saying, yes, thank goodness, I finally found out why I felt so miserable for years on end with whatever variety of symptoms I had. The other half of you is saying, okay, I've seen gluten-free written up everywhere and some people are saying it fads and of course Hollywood and the media just don't know what they're talking about so you're totally confused that way and you're saying this is a maze and a minefield and unfortunately most doctors really don't know what they're talking about with following a gluten-free diet unless they follow it daily themselves and unfortunately far too many nutritionists again unless they're following a gluten-free diet themselves can tell you okay you're deficient from a to z but they can't tell you how to cook the vegetables you're meant to eat to make yourself feel better they can't tell you the good products that are on sale out there how to cook them so that's what I work on doing and as I say my six foot four baby would soon tell me it but I find my wheat flour friends are quite happy with what I make when I go to any of the neighborhood parties all I get asked is is that an una dessert and then they all demolish it because they know my gluten-free is good so nowadays you're finding um I normally say to people, when you're looking stuff up online, look up and make sure that the date given to anything is reasonably current. If you go into Google and start typing in, is such and such gluten-free, before you've started typing in the GL of gluten-free, it tends to fill it in for you. Unfortunately, when you look at the options to click on on Google, if they're even a year out of date, they can be useless because unfortunately manufacturers are changing their ingredients all the time. And it might sound really boring that we're saying all the time, you have to check the ingredient labels and the list each and every time you buy because you really cannot guarantee these manufacturers care the slightest thing for us. I say they don't care enough to be caring and it's profit is their God, not us. So you have to take care of yourself and read the labels and discover all the ingredients that wheat as a name is hidden under, then discover what other foods you're likely to be messed around with. Because I find the cleaner the diet you go, the more careful you are with gluten-free, the more likely you are to react to other foods and slowly build up more reactions. Now, doctors seem to think that celiac disease is, is the main thing to be concerned about, but I find with all the talks I give, my cooking classes, dealing with students and clients, someone with what they now term as non-celiac gluten sensitivity, which is an umbrella term which used to cover gluten sensitivity, gluten intolerance, gluten allergy, whatever name people called it. So it's now non-celiac gluten sensitivity. People can feel just as rough with that as with full-blown celiac disease. To me, the only real difference between the both 
is that celiac disease is an autoimmune disease, can be far more dangerous if not taken care of and can lead to cancer. But if what you've got to do is still follow a gluten-free diet, that's all there is to it. You have to follow a gluten-free diet. There's no cheating. There's no thinking, well, I'll be good Monday through Friday and cheat at weekends. You can't. I found that I was, um, when my son was diagnosed, I was doing, you know, the ordinary meats and vegetables were easily gluten-free. I was doing the baking gluten-free for all of us, but I was still buying wheat flour, bread and cereal for my husband and I, because as we all know, most of it's incredibly expensive and quite disgusting most of the time. And I then discovered when I was giving a talk and I spoke to a nurse at one of the local hospitals, she said she was only diagnosed with celiac disease when her two little ones had anaphylactic reactions. She went totally gluten-free and within two period cycles, not only her period problems went away, but all her neurological problems. So I found when I went totally gluten-free, all my arthritis pains, which as a chef using your hands the whole time and after a bad ski accident, you tend to take pains in your joints for granted. And so many females, we have so many female problems, you just put up with it and you know take a couple of painkillers around that time of the month. When I went totally gluten-free, it all went away. So for myself, if I eat something that I think is safe and I get joint pains immediately, I know I've been what they call glutened or cross-contamination. A girlfriend of mine that's a nurse with celiac disease, arthritis joint pains are our first sign of contamination. So do bear in mind, it's not just stomach. You can get so many other reactions to it. So I went totally gluten-free, as I said. My arthritis pains went away and my period pains went away. And so my poor husband, he has gluten-free the whole time and he's the one that's still allowed to have wheat bread and cereal, but that's the only gluten that's in our house. So I have th over three years of recipes, my monthly recipe column for the National Foundation for Celiac Awareness. I post the full recipe with instructions on my blog, royaltemptations.com slash blog. You can find me on Facebook at Gluten Free Cooking with Una, so please like me there. Give me thumbs up below for liking me and please subscribe. I'll be doing more and more of those videos and not just talking videos to give you advice, but following on with all my appearances on our local ABC station with some cooking videos for you and my food is good. You, you'll be very happy and I stick to prices. So take care. Bye.